I recently bought this B-Link mini PC for a little over 250 US dollars and I must say I've been highly impressed with its performance. Even in 720p locked to 30fps, Elden Ring looks absolutely breathtaking. This is definitely stacking up to be an excellent gaming PC. I purchased this as an open box unit from Amazon Warehouse Steals, but was pleasantly surprised to find that it was in excellent condition despite being previously opened. The B-Link Mini PC here boasts some impressive specs including the Ryzen 5560U processor, 16GB of LPDDR4 memory, and a 500GB M2 drive. Let's take a look inside the box and see what's included. Inside the box we find the AC charger, a long and short HDMI cable, a mounting bracket, and some screws. The front of the B-Link Mini PC features two USB 3.2 ports, a Type-C connection. Although it's not USB 4.0, it is capable of displaying video out. There's also a clear CMOS reset button located on the front. The sides and the top have some impressive vents. Moving to the back, we can see we have a Gigabit Ethernet jack, two USB 2.0 ports, two HDMIs that are capable of 4K60, and the DC charging port. Examining the expanded view from the B-Link Mini PC on their website, it's evident that the company put considerable thought into the design of this device. Having the ability to swap the memory and the M2 drive is a nice feature. They also included a little start guide on the bottom to access the BIOS and the boot options if you need to figure out how to do that. As someone who enjoys taking things apart, I couldn't resist the urge to open it up and take a closer look inside. There's four easy access screws in each corner, then all we have to do is just pry up this back plate and it should open up easily. B-Link sure made it easy to open up this PC if we need to get into it. My B-Link mini PC came equipped with two sticks of 8GB of crucial branded DDR4 memory. I did find a great deal on a 32GB kit, so I went ahead and upgraded that in my unit. It's great to see B-Link using brand name parts in their mini PCs. They also have a brand name Intel 670p drive located above the Wi-Fi adapter. If we look at the lid, you can see the 2.5 inch expansion slot inside. The manufacturer also thought of including a thermal pad to protect the M2 drive's hottest components. It's time to power up the mini PC and test its startup speed. With only an antivirus program and no bloatware on the OS, this mini PC is now set up and ready to use. This is going to be a similar boot test to what you'll experience when you've just set up your PC. Thanks to the Intel NVMe drive, it boasts a startup speed of a little over 15 seconds, which is really impressive. I attempted to run Geekbench on the PC, but encountered some issues with getting the test started. I decided to test its performance and temperature management in Cinebench instead, just to see how it performs. After running the test for about 8 minutes, I observed that the temperature peaked at around 75 Celsius while using the stock 25 watt TDP. This is all thanks to the excellent cooling system implemented in this mini PC, which helps keep the APU from thermal throttling. The 25 watt TDP configuration at stock seems to be a perfect match for the cooling system that they're using in this PC. Even at these higher temperatures, the computer runs whisper quiet thanks to the small little fan that they've included on this heatsink. If you're looking for a silent computer, this is definitely the way to go. Running the benchmark in CPU-Z, I got a multi-core score of around 3500 with a single threaded score of 557. By submitting the score to the benchmark database, we can compare it to other CPUs in the market. The Ryzen 5560U with its 25 watt TDP performs impressively in single threaded workloads, surpassing other impressive CPUs and even beating others like the i9-9900KF and 11400H. Overall, the single threaded performance of the Ryzen 5560U is highly commendable. The B-Link Mini PC shows decent performance in multi-core workloads, although it falls slightly behind other CPUs such as the i5-10600. However, it does outperform other APUs such as the i7-1255U and the Ryzen 5600U, at least at this TDP. We're getting pretty decent performance here from our multi-threaded workloads. In terms of Cinebench scores, the B-Link falls short of other impressive chips such as the 9880H, but it manages to outperform the i7-7700K. That being said, you can still use this mini PC for rendering or editing tasks. 
In single-threaded scores here, it seems to match the single-threaded performance by the i7-1165 G7 and surpasses the 7700K and the 9880H. To gain some further insight into the unit's performance, we can load up CPU-Z. CPU-Z shows that the APU is capable of boosting over 4GHz, which is quite impressive. The motherboard page shows us our BIOS version as well as the PCI Express version that we're running. We can see that the 32GB Kingston memory kit that I installed is running correctly at 3200MHz with a CL20 latency. The only difference between this kit and the stock kit is the capacity. It's also worth noting that at stock settings, B-Link has allocated 3GB of memory to the Vega graphics. This should help a little bit with gaming. When I first set up the mini PC, I found there was a user account already on the computer, but it was locked with the password. Because the account was locked, I had to reset Windows through the recovery options and perform a full reinstallation, which is probably what I would recommend in this case anyways. Despite this, the SSD still maintains its health at 100% with about 900 gigs in reads and 1000 in writes. It's worth noting that the drive is PCI Express 3.0, it's a QLC drive, and it has a DRAM cache. Having a DRAM cache should help prevent any slowdowns as the drive fills up. With 2.6GB per second read and 1.5GB per second write, it's a really good drive. I'm getting a solid 866MB connection on my Wi-Fi 6 router over 5GHz. A quick internet speed test also indicates that the mini PC is capable of producing impressive download speeds of over 400 megabits per second and upload speeds of over 100 megabits per second. I'm not getting the full thousand down which I have here but that's alright because it's still a decent connection. This PC is a great option for media consumption as it can easily consume 4K content on YouTube without any major issues. Although it may drop a few frames at the beginning when buffering, it performs flawlessly afterwards. It's worth noting seeing a few frames dropped at the beginning of a rendering of video is quite common. Being able to handle 4K media content without issue and the whisper quiet fan on board makes this an ideal choice for a Plex server. Moving over to streaming 8K, it's clear that the B-Link PC finally met its match. If you look up the top left corner, you'll notice that all the video frames are nearly being dropped and the PC is struggling to keep up. Given 8K content is still relatively rare and the screens required to view it are still relatively expensive, it's not really a crucial factor for most users. Upon checking Task Manager, it becomes apparent that the CPU is the bottleneck for 8K media consumption, with every core maxing out and even the GPU experiencing high usage. When switching back to 4K media content, you notice that the usage on the CPU and GPU drops significantly. This is a great PC if you want something for media consumption or as a Plex server. When it comes to gaming, the B-Link PC performs well on indie titles like CrossCode, delivering a smooth 60fps experience while consuming less than 20 watts of power. This is a great option for those that enjoy lighter titles or casual gaming. Examining a more demanding title, Hollow Knight runs smoothly at 1080p with normal effects using less than 18 watts of power. The game loads new areas quite quickly and particle effects do not affect the frame rate in any noticeable way. This is another game that's well suited for this PC. When running Ori and the Will of the Wisps at 1080p low settings, the frame rate struggles to keep up at 60fps and drops as low as 40 to 50 in certain areas. However, when switching to 720p balanced graphical settings, we can achieve the same frame rates as 1080p low. If we want to hit a constant 60fps, all we have to do is just drop the graphical settings to low on 720p and we get a smooth 60. When it comes to playing older DirectX 9 titles like Alan Wake, the performance relies heavily on the CPU. However, even with this limitation, the game can provide a solid 30fps experience at resolutions as high as 1080p. Playing some older AAA titles like this at console-like frame rates on a PC that costs less than 300 US dollars is still quite an enjoyable experience. While playing Subnautica, I adjusted the settings to 720p low to ensure a smooth 60fps experience while maintaining the game's impressive visuals. Those who don't mind a locked 30fps frame rate could even raise the resolution to 1080p low. 
As a fan of Doom, I couldn't resist testing the remake on the PC to see how it performed. Surprisingly, even with the settings set to low at 100% resolution scale in 720p, the game looks great and runs easily over 60fps. Even in high particle and effect areas, it doesn't have any issue keeping the frame rate over 60fps. However, when you bump the resolution up to 1080p, the game runs at 30fps, which seems to be a trend so far with this APU. The frame rate is going over 30fps, but you're better off just locking the frame rate to either 30 or 40fps. Moving on to Elden Ring, even at 720p low settings, the game looks impressive and I'm able to achieve a consistent 30fps. Despite this game's notorious difficulty, it's still one of my favorite titles from the past couple of years. I have no doubt that someone could comfortably finish this game running on this mini PC. Even with the APU running at 25 watts, we're not getting any thermal throttling which is great to see. If you want to see a mini PC optimization guide down the road, let me know. There's definitely a lot of ways that we can squeeze extra performance out of any mini PC. In summarizing my thoughts on this PC, I must say the build quality is impressive for this price range. The machine operates at near silent levels even when compared to handhelds like the Ioneo Air and the Steam Deck. Even when under full load, the machine is extremely quiet. Despite its compact size, I didn't observe any instances of thermal throttling which is remarkable considering the unit's size and whisper quiet fan even under heavy load. There are also a few drawbacks worth noting. Firstly, the selection of ports is decent but I wish there were a little bit more USB 3s on the back and the absence of USB 4 is due to the APU's lack of support for it. Another limitation of this mini PC is the dated Vega graphics. Although this PC is capable of running lighter titles at 1080p 60fps, more modern games often require resolution reductions down to 720p to maintain a solid 60. If you're able to snag one of these on Amazon with a good coupon price or find an open box deal like I did, I think you'd be really satisfied with the great value of this mini PC. Make sure to subscribe and let me know in the comments if you have any questions.